Hello, this is meeting number six of the Cyclodge series about large language models. And today we have yet another talk by Gigis, who will talk more about Bosquet, this LLM ops platform enclosure that will, uh, uh, it's something a few of us will probably keep enjoying. And today we mostly see how Bosquet can be used to implement some uh, research papers in this field of large language models. And as always, we begin by introducing ourselves. So each of us is invited to say something. You can say something about yourself and also about anything you find interesting nowadays and that could be related to this group. And uh, yeah, so maybe, uh, Jay, would you like to begin and say something about yourself while you're driving? I would love to. You know, I think it's just really interesting. Is is my audio coming in okay? Um, okay yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's very interesting. The sentiment seems to have shifted very much, at least in a very important segment of the closure community, around LLMs. I remember checking in about a year ago, and the sentiment was not very positive. The, the last closure conference, there were no talks about anything related to LLMs. Um, and I think it's interesting because for me, uh, my own perspective has shifted recently from them being something of a novelty to uh, the realization that they can be coupled to generate code and agentic workflows that really opens up a lot of new opportunities that I think we're barely just scratching the surface of. I've personally shifted my own entire business around um, the uh, possibilities that, that these things have, and it's my primary focus these days. So I'm incredibly excited to see the work everyone else here is doing. I'm very disappointed that this is my uh, first time at one of these meetings. So I uh, really appreciate it and looking forward to hearing what y'all have to say. Yeah, great to have you. And yes, James was talking about these things even before we, we even knew what they were uh, a few months ago. And now, yeah, it is wonderful to have you here. Um, yeah, uh, Ash, hello. Would you like to say something? Yeah, hi, I'm Ash. Um... I work as a researcher at Stirling University in Scotland. Um, I'm kind of really interested in um, applied AI, particularly in the area of um, recommendation systems um, in the in in the in the world of welfare. Um, and that's me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Dan, hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Dan. I'm a programmer, and I'm mostly interested these days in the code generation. And recently, I, I realized, now I, I did try some time ago, and especially the Clojure code and the Elixir, which is <clears throat> which are the languages that I use, um, wasn't very good, but it's getting really good lately. And uh, especially when, when there are tasks which are, kind of the same all the time or or changes is getting really good at, at user interfaces generating HTML and and for instance I don't know anything about tailwind and I just ask him give me this transform it into tailwind it's done or <clears throat> I had code generated and it it was a UI and it had like divs and I didn't like it and I said transform that to use tables because it's more accessible and it did it and it was perfect so uh, i be became really interested in this side in uh, generating code and to generate code you need some good large prompts that's when i discovered bosquet and i started looking at okay this is how i can combine many things into what i want and the other part that i like is it seems that there's lots of startups who want to do that, uh, talking to your data. So you accumulate a lot of data and all of a sudden I would like to explore how that feels. And it, it feels like in that particular area, especially if you have databases, and I'm using <clears throat> Datomic, but also Postgres. And, and um, it seems to be quite good at that as well. Even transforming from one format to another, uh, 
So this is why I'm interested uh, lately, and I'm trying to to show to my colleagues how we could use this. But uh, yeah, it's it's becoming good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing that. And yes, all of these topics are things that would be wonderful to explore in future meetings. Um, and hello, uh, Kanishk, and hello, Paula. Thank you for joining. We are just presenting ourselves before the talk. Uh, I'm Danielle. I mostly do statistics and community building in this community uh, cyclode. And nowadays, I'm interested in uh, 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 some recent methods that our friend Zane shared with me about combining probabilistic programming with language models. For example, using this practice of probabilistic programming to, to steer language models and, and make them be more uh, restricted in what they do. And I'm struggling with the details and start trying to learn how to do that these days. And hello, Tim. Hello, thank you for joining. Um, Paula, would you like to say something about yourself, even though most of us know you already? Hello. Hi. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess these days I'm more of an ontologist than a programmer. Um, my work at the moment is around... Um, Trying to integrate LLMs with ontologies, um, getting it to query databases to establish what ontologies are um, so that it understands how to work with data, and then having it generate ontologies based on um, you know, uh, partial descriptions and um, so, so partial ontological descriptions and then text strings which describe other things which are needed uh, trying to get it to generate more ontology um, more of an ontology for me um, but the you know the idea is to not simply use a um, a database in my case a graph database as um, as a rag but to um, to provide knowledge about what the data is, how it's shaped, how it's supposed to interact, um, and to connect that into the LLMs that I'm working with. Um, so that, you know, the, so it's not simply working on retrieval and comparing uh, raw data to the sorts of things that it's remembered, but it can actually uh, talk to ontologies to understand this is how data is structured and to interact with that data appropriately. So um, I've been hearing a lot more recently about uh, work that's going on in this area around ontologies rather than simple um, data systems for augmenting uh, large language models. And I'm trying to do uh, work in that area myself. So, um, and I'm lazy, so I haven't been learning um, the, the the Python connectors for closure like I should be, and I've been delving a little more into Python than I like lately. I'm going to have to fix that. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, and a couple of meetings ago, you were telling us just a little bit about this hope to get in, in that direction, combining knowledge graphs and language models. And, and it is so wonderful, it is happening. And yeah, another, another topic we hope to explore more. Um, and hello, Kanishk, uh, nice to meet. Would you like to say something about yourself? Thanks, Daniel. Um, I'm Kanishk. Hi. I'm from the other side of the uh, globe. I'm from India. So Clojure has reached India. There are some uh, places where Clojure works. Uh, in my workplace, I don't use Clojure because Clojure being a niche technology uh, language. Um, <clears throat> so uh, being in a service-based, uh, um, you can say employer. Or So uh, the, the main goal is to actually get the business and get the stuff done out. So 
closure being not being a very uh, ex uh, it is not acceptable much uh, so yeah so uh, just trying to learn closure have been doing closure for uh, two years uh separately as a uh, uh, as a hobby yeah. and i'm um, uh, i have a total experience of 11 years over a decade so yeah software engineering btech cs background so all of that yes so just getting uh started with closure want to use closure more more efficiently and uh and uh the, this new growing space of data science and and just uh asking my question that why would closure community take such a big task of of actually re reinventing the wheel while we have all the LLMs in the world, like uh, through the companies that, that have given out there, uh, they are open source as well, and uh, and many companies are are doing that already, but still uh, our our community is is trying to actually get that hundred percent right. So I've been following um, the, uh, this community and this uh, sky clause for a while and just uh, had some guts to actually join the meeting and and just be with you guys yeah <laughs> thank you thank you so much for joining us and and finally so nice to meet and yes thank you for joining on a late hour on your side i think um, and hello tim uh, uh, if you can, oh yeah, hello Tim. If you wish to say something, it would be great. Hello, uh, yeah, Hi. it's a little bit early here, so <clears throat> I'm gonna keep my camera off. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm pretty new to closure and more new to data science, and I'm just attending this to try to get a little bit better at the data science side of it and understand uh, all the things you could do in the data science area. Uh, but I like uh, programming um, with functional style constructs, and so that's what drew me to closure and mutable data. Uh, just seems a lot more sane to reason about, so that really drew me to closure. Uh, I played around with Scala a little bit. I think closure is even a better fit for my mind. Um, <clears throat> But uh, the question is what to do with it, and data science seems to be a growing um, uh, area where closure is actually being applied. So that's, that's why I'm interested. Thank you so much. Yeah, and now uh, we will move to Jigis. And Jigis, uh, you are welcome to present yourself uh, again, and, and uh, we can begin with the talk. Hey, hi, hi everyone, thanks for coming. Um, yeah, so I'm Jigis, I'm based in Vilnius, Lithuania. I'm getting darker here. Uh, I've been working on BossCAD for, yeah, close to a year. I think I started, I started working on it uh, somewhere around Christmas, New Year break as a means to explore the space. And yeah, it turned gradually into quite quite substantial project uh, and an open source library. Um, so I will be presenting it, it uh, in a bit. My background is largely in, in NLP. Before that, I was working, running my own small consultancy uh, agency for doing uh, natural language processing um, projects. So I'm not new to this language processing understanding generation space. Um, yeah, but also why I've got so excited about LLMs because it kind of bumps tremendously what you can do with language. Before that, it was always a struggle to achieve a performance, to achieve a precision, to, to train ML models, always falling back to all sorts of rule engines from gate building Sheffield UK to UIMA, to spacey, all sorts of things, which eventually, you know, you, you kind of be construct very complex stuff, which never works as you wish. And LLMs are like really, really reinvigorating the space, I think. Yeah, so I will start. And as we, as we, as, as, as Daniel was saying, asking uh, just anytime, please interrupt, ask questions. Uh, uh, we can move into all sorts of directions. So I will quickly go through already 
had quite nicely previously implemented uh, paper. And then I will move to another one, more complex. I didn't have time and, and energy to implement it properly, but it works. But you will see also what are the problems with, uh, with working with LLMs. I will touch on everything, uh, evaluations, uh, RAG, kind of the, all, all the aspects. So you will see the complexities of which will be needed to implement, I, I guess, any more, more or less non-trivial LLM project. So where is my, ah, oh, my screen is not shared. Okay, so let's, uh, first, first things first. Um, da, 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 here, yes. Um, so uh, that's the plan, quick intro uh, into, into a few of, of, of uh, previous papers. Then I will be focusing mainly on uh, on uh, wait sorry on the slash language models as optimizers so this will be the prime 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 uh, topic of your of your talk and as I go I will explain all sorts of Bosquet uh, Bosquet concepts I think importantly it's also we should not think about uh, that uh, this can be implemented only on the Bosquet. Uh, we can we can have different strategies, uh, different components. So it's it's not necessarily or purely Bosquet talk. I can see that uh, the same can be implemented just I don't know using you know closure functions without any libraries uh, or more low, lower level libraries. So yeah, keep in mind that as well. Okay, mm, yeah. So I want to start from. Um, a small plug of the of my new library. As I was working with uh, with um, Bosquet, I realized that I need to download the Hugging Face um, datasets. And just as Paul, I'm kind of a, a bit lazy, and I okay, Hugging Face has this big uh, dataset extraction lib, and I think people was thinking, yeah, okay, Python, I need to learn how to plug it. So I just quickly wrote a simple, a simple library, which downloads, you can basically has this single function, load the data set. And those data sets can be huge, yes, can be like running into gigabytes. So you want to cache them. So that's, uh, it will take care of, uh, for you of caching. It is also Hugging Face API allows only 100 uh, records to be fetched. So imagine if you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of records, you make a lot of HTTP calls, means a lot of them fail. You need to retry. So all of that is taken care of by the, this one is by an amazing true grid library. This kind of repeating uh, calls through, through the wire. So simple, simple lib for you to fetch, uh, fetch the stuff from, um, from the um, HT uh, Hugging Face uh, site. Okay, so this is uh, this is one and um, to demonstrate this um, why I'm using it is this pro-social uh, dialogue. Uh, how how it is done? So the idea here is that um, if you're implementing chatbots, you probably don't want it to start talking bad things. So you want to stop it. So, you know, if, if someone is, is complaining or, you know, talking some 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 very negative uh, words, you want to prevent uh, further discussion and maybe already, you know, reply with certain, uh, certain, uh, certain um, uh, messages. So uh, there is this pro-social dialogue data set, which you can inject into your memory and, uh, and then use it in chat. So this is like a little bit like a RAG implementation. In this, uh, in this um, scenario where I'm describing, I'm using- uh, Jigis, uh, yeah. maybe I'll stop you. Uh, uh -huh. Can you mention what RAG is? Oh well, yeah, it's, it's a Thanks. retrieval augment, augmented generation. So, yeah, so imagine this is, and this uh, pro-social dialogue, this is the data set here, yes, uh, found on Hugging Face. So someone was annotating the, uh, uh, the message from user, 
Yes. What is the response and why it is bad? Yes. Uh, uh, why it is bad and how how what's 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 potentially wrong with this conversation? So it's a kind of a database which will not fit into your context, even not into this new GPT four context, because it's I think it's a hundred thousand uh, entries. And imagine you want to use those explanations on this ROTS, uh, I forgot what ROTS stands for, rules of thumb, yes? You want to use them to guide your conversation, how to fix it. It cannot be loaded all of it into, into the context. So hence, you want to retrieve it from some external memory, yeah? So retrieval, augmented generation, you retrieve, you augment your response with this whatever you retrieved and you generate uh, the um the stuff to to the user yeah so that's the that's the uh motivation behind it and uh <laughs> sorry yeah so in this case it's very simple usually people would would put it into the vector database but i'm putting it into the memory in this simple example and they uh, see here, here like Bosquet has this uh, system uh, system based stuff to to kind of construct components to short simple term term memory is for the very simple scenarios where I, I don't want to use uh, vector database just kind of string comparison and cosine difference yeah so we will go deeper into this uh, so I'm kind of just quickly going through that but um, but the idea here is that you can Bosquet now provide through the Bosquet. We have different library, this HFDS, which allows to download uh, data sets, and then you can use it for whatnot, for for your data science tasks, or you can use it in your RAG uh, processes where you want to load that data into whatever database you use. Yeah. So this is the. I don't know if you have any further questions about uh, about this small uh, small library. Uh, for the uh, hugging face uh, extraction. If not, if not, then I will go to more to towards our kind of main topic. First, let's take a simpler, simpler paper, chain of uh, verification. So chain of verification is a technique designed to to reduce hallucinations in your in your prompting and prompt responses yes, so the idea here is that we generate a query yes and then from the baseline response the verific uh, verification questions are generated here as yes, the llm is generating those questions yes, so this is a set of questions and then so it's a kind of multi-step chain of prompts, yes? That's why Bosquet is this really nice uh, tool for that because it allows you with chaining of, of prompts. So as those verification questions are generated by LLM, then you want to verify them, yes? Ideally by humans, by a totally different system, uh, agents maybe that would be an interesting extension like doing google search or bing search or whatever is available or making calls you name it yes this, this can be uh, idea is that it is independently verified in my implementation there is no basically independence it is verified by another call to gpt but still the idea is that you have a query you have baseline response you generate verification questions once we get the final the, uh, answers to those verified questions, then you ask LLM to refine the answer. And this way you get uh, much, much higher precision. Yes. And this is the whole, well, so that's the gist of it. And uh, when we measure performance, it's, it gives, gives you increases for, for the quality. Uh, did I explain it? So, this 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 picture basically tells it all how how chain of verification prompting works. Yeah, so we can go here then. Yeah, that maybe it makes sense to spend just one more minute with that uh, 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 plot of the you know typical workflow where you had in the paper, uh, so that we can uh -huh. stare yeah. at it and yeah. look. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Back. Yes. Yes, here. 
so allow me just quickly i'll scroll down i think we had example below like also in yeah here that's a good example oh nice yeah thanks yeah so this is a query yes so you as a user ask it towards this system yes it, it generates initial response let's say with gpt 3.5 something then you ask I don't know, your Llama model or whatever is instructed, like a fine-tuned or whatnot to, towards you know, generating verification questions. Or you can do it all, all with the same GPT-4, doesn't matter. But but you ideally, you would mix approaches yeah? so, to, to, so that there is this uh, a bit of a separation of concerns. Um, yeah, so it, it kind of generates those questions. Then a the next step, Another call, independent call, asks for, without this upper context, yes, it doesn't know this base, baseline. Well, uh, that's very important. Then you ask plain verifications, those questions, this is unknown, yes? This is not shown in the prompt. So it will go and then kind of use its own means to LLM or, or other verifier, will go and fetch those answers, yes? And when we will compare it to, to what, what was what was provided. Yeah, so this is incorrect. Yes. When did Texas secede yeah. from Mexico? Yes, it was this. Just, just wondering, how do you parse the baseline response into those three different uh, verification tasks? Yeah, so um, in the Bosquet, I have uh, I have this um, uh, format request that I, I can return EDN, EDN, or JSON, or list. And then it's like sequence. I know that the first question, first answer. Second question, second answer, and so on. It just goes like, like, you know, pairs, like that. But then you ask to compare it against this as well. So we will see in the, in the code. We can check it out. Yeah, and then as the last step, yeah, then it, it kind of goes and, and fixes the, uh, based on the verifications, that's the corrected response. Yeah. Yeah, this one is from the last, from, from the uh, last response, verified response, this is, even dropped Texas revolution. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can actually then probably go to the implementation here. Yeah, so the workflow. Generate baseline question, uh, answer to the question. Yes. Then we generating a set of questions to verify. Yes. And of course, in my case, it's it's independent request to LLMs. <laughs> it's like, okay, the documentation here is probably a bit misleading. I'm not, I'm not using agents or humans, but theoretically you would you would uh, have that as well if, if you would want to can be like really, really precise. Yes. Then the step will compare those provided facts to the baseline answer, and then we ask to reformulate. Okay, so how this is done? Um, always in Bosquet, we're going to define the model parameters. Well, what, what, what are we using um, as, a, as a kind of input to request? So that's one. Usually, I would not, I don't def define it. I don't def it. I usually call it inside the you know, generation function, but it's more like for the documentation purposes. I can define it and define it separately. Um, and here, this is a request to, to generate response in, in Eden. Why I'm saying that uh, because I'm chaining the calls to LLMs, that means that the output will be input of the other call. That means it's basically APIs, call closure APIs, and they want to have Edens, not, not some text to, to deal with. So, so this, is, uh, this is how you declare it. An interesting thing um, uh, now, OpenAI also supports uh, JSON as output, but it's not enough to specify in parameters that you want Eden or, or JSON. 
just as also in this new open AI release, you need to also tell in your prompt that you will need Eden. Yes. Okay, generate output in Eden or JSON. I'm thinking maybe I have to kind of provide those default uh, default prompt injections with this um, with this uh, additional instructions, but it would be like a bit of a uh, black magic, yes, something untransparent for developers. So I'm not sure if, if it's a good idea to 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 do that. So, but you will see how it is done in in prompt. Yeah. So this is the. Uh, it's just an explanation of, of all the variables here. So yeah, well, that's the boss cat's main main uh, main function generate. Yes, and this is the prompt. Now, since I'm using uh, Pathom to resolve the dependencies. I really don't care about the sequence, yes. Oh, the baseline answer depends on baseline instruction. The other blob depends on something else. I totally don't care. And we as a prompt developers should not care about that. It is, we just go, we define those blocks. We may be reusing them between different, uh, different systems. Uh, and then we just, you know, combine everything here in this map. And then since this goes into Pathom, Pathom will resolve this graph of execution. Yeah, so that's what I'm constructing. Answer the provided questions. This is a baseline. Then this is my initial question. And this is all, this is the extension of the Selmer. I'm using Selmer um, uh, templating library for this with my own fork and extension. This is a custom uh, tag, which says that, okay, at this spot, I want my uh, uh, AI generation to happen. And this will be assigned to, to, to the baseline answer key in the return map. So the Pathom returns the same kind of the map resolved and it will also add this as a separate entry in the in answer you will see in green result yeah so the same as verification plan you see well, i'm giving here example that's what i was saying it is not enough to request uh, in the parameters that okay give me eden you have to also um uh, add in in the prompt uh, that you want this Yes, and this is okay. Well, at least okay in terms of how broader industry is doing. The new release of uh, OpenAI after Developers Day, where they introduced this formatted outputs, they also require this. So I'm a bit it's an open discussion. I, I I was thinking maybe to automatically generate those, maybe have like Mali specification of data shape and say okay. That's my example. Give me even like that, so you don't have to 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 write those instructions yourselves. But I don't, I'm not sure. Again, this feels a bit like Ruby style uh, or dynamic injections of all sorts of magic things, which you not transparent enough. But who knows? Maybe that would be good uh, for for the developers broader. Yes. So. Question, baseline answer. So you see how it goes again with question. We've got baseline answer, verification plans, and then we get verification instruction. Uh, verification again, the same generation, but now I want verification questions to be generated, yes? And uh, once this is generated, the questions, I can also execute the whole, the whole kind of the, uh, answers and verify if they, if they are good. This is also given a list of question, correct answer, provided answer, determine if provided answer is correct. Yeah, so this is my validation step. Yes. Um, done as a separate call, but again, this is not a, and ideally it would be maybe search engine doing this, but, uh, but it's a one one GPT driven uh, process. Note again the power of, of using Selmer here so that we can iterate and create uh, dynamically those um, uh, those um, uh, templates with uh, data and so on. Then we are getting revisions. Yes. Um, I have a quick question. Yeah. If it's if it's relevant, can you mention some of the differences in your fork of Selmer from the base version of Selmer? Yeah, so two differences. One is this gen, 
which is not, this in itself does not require a fork. Selmer allows to define your own uh, tags and use it. So you don't need really to fork it. But what's lacking in, in Selmer is that once Selmer calls a tag like gen or for loop or you name it, it does not have information about the already generated text. So it does not see anything above, yes? So that's the main addition I did, is that Jen receives everything it already saw. So it can kind of, kind of can, can, can see all the text already processed, which is neat because it goes into prompt, you need to have all of that here. So that's, that's the sole, sole thing. I'm thinking maybe further, another kind of additions can be introduced like prompt, prompt constructions but nothing nothing so far like really good uh, on my plate but uh, but I, I would see maybe working further on selmer as a separate separate work more like prompting uh, prompting techniques inside it yeah but that's that's all quite quite simple great thank you yeah so and that's okay so it kind of, it, and it goes like this yeah so this is question now i'm just uh, with clerk rendering nicely the results yes so this is question this is an answer it got the uh, which facts were stated what is the verification question correct answer according to another call different call to to the to gpt open ai and then evaluation again gpt driven yes of course again this is realistically it's not 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 ideal that everything is done by GPT, but again, this is mainly for for illustrating the paper. Yes, so it kind of it goes and okay says this is false, this is true, false, true, and so on. Yes, and then based on those answers, again we request to generate this uh, revised uh, revised question. Yeah, and you see the whole implementation essentially boils down. To writing this uh, those prompts and not really caring about uh, interrelationships between them, uh, like how, when, what needs to be called, and so on. And uh, mm, yeah, that's that's uh, that's all it gets. Ah, here is that the, the last parameter is this. Uh, so. Uh, I think good, good, quite good feature of Bosquet is that we can use different models, different parameters for different executions of 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 Gen space. So yes, for revised answer, I'm using this. For validation, I'm using model EDN parameters. Yes, something where I'm, I I de de declared here above. So EDN parameters by default, if I'm not specifying, ah, I'm merging with this one. Yeah, so it's essentially GPT-4, but with EDN, yes? So different different call, different kind of the, uh, uh, generations can be set up to call different, um, uh, different models and different parameters. By the way, I also had declaration of those parameters inside this gen feature. So you would say generate, you would write model, you would write temperature inside of it. But I've kind of removed that. It's still deprecated, but but not, uh, not um, um, maintained, thinking that templates should not be that more really aware of, uh, of the model details. I should be dynamically able to change uh, to change uh, models for the same generation. So I don't know. Again, might might be a better better to still maintain it. Maybe saying okay that for this one I always always need GPT four or Llama, and that's it. And you cannot override it with dynamic or the other way around. Don't know. So this is again a question. I don't, I'm not forcing an answer myself for myself. I want this to emerge mainly for use. Uh, what, what's better, this dynamic stuff or, or like embedding it in uh, inside the, inside the uh, template itself. 
Um, I just want to add in, that's a very interesting thought that doesn't currently exist in the LLM tool ecosystem. No one else has thought made of thought of making a uh, agnostic prompt that is context sensitive to um, the the type of model that you want to use. There are other ways of doing it. They're mostly object oriented, but this is the first data driven approach I've seen to it, which is a which is a really fascinating idea. Yeah. Yeah, but again, it needs to be tested. Yes, is it really working beyond like in really production environments? Well, let's see. So that's why it's, it's great to talk about Bosquet and then play, our, play with those paper implementations because it underlines the, brings out the different different requirements, different uses, use cases. Okay, uh, any, any, anything else you want to discuss with, with chain, verific chain of verification? If not, I would go in to another one, more complex uh, paper. Um, I just wanted to mention also that that tool that you just discussed, the context sensitivity, would be a really interesting way to explore papers. There's a really strange phenomena in this space where I have actually seen a lot of papers. For instance, there is a, um, a self-reflection, self-critique paper yep. out and the, the interesting thing about this paper is that it only works with GPT-4. And, and to me, I find that very strange that academic papers are relying on closed source mm -hmm. company models to do things, right? And um, I, I've actually never seen that before. Uh, it's a strange phenomena. And so having something like this would very easily allow you to test reproducibility uh, on open source models with minimal reconfiguration, and that's very difficult to do, uh, and and be accepted as a as a as a good reproduction with a lot of the object driven tools. So, um, mm. another fascinating application there. Yeah, and my my immediate goal actually for the next week is to pro someone was that Ash, if I'm pronouncing correctly. Uh, was it, it probably it? was. This is the yeah. the Lama question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my goal is to have this next week to review and check out the Lama, Lama support so what, what we really can have is you know model agnostic because now I have Cohere uh, OpenAI and adding Lama would be really great to see that okay this the same system can be used for for those very different uh, different um, uh, models so yeah Let's see if, if, if it will, it will, hopefully it will work without many, many changes. Okay, so, uh, so language models as optimizers. This is quite fascinating uh, paper by DeepMind. So the idea is that uh, prompt engineering, well, it's brittle. It's, it's hard to know what works and what not. And, uh, you know, you change the position, you change the word, and it has this tremendous influence. So the idea is that you can kind of define the optimization uh, tasks for, for LLM, and it can solve various optimization problems, including prompt design. Um, that's how we are approaching it, yes? So you have, uh, you have your kind of the, you define your LLM as optimizer, yes? You, you describe a task. You say, okay, what's my solution to that task and what well, how, what was the quality of that task, peers? And uh, you kind of, you know, you iterate through the system. Uh, you will ask it to generate a different task description. You run through this again, you, you, you get another scores for this task description. And you kind of, then this way you can mutate it and, and come come with a good, good, um, good so ideal uh, prompt or instruction for how to resolve the task. So uh, that means that we really need a good evaluator. So I'll show you the evaluator, which is again, not good. It is, it is based on the same asking LLM, okay, do self-evaluation. Yeah, so having this external evaluation uh, implementation is critical. And in Bosquet, I already, I started in a different namespace, different kind of a corner of Bosquet, this evaluation framework, which I would be 
so grateful and happy if someone would take over and then maybe we could could move into the different uh, different library like LLM evaluation. And uh, again, this is an unsolved problem. Everyone wants this, but uh, but without this, we are really in the dark. We don't know. We don't know the scores. Yes, we don't know the quality of whatever we are doing with LLMs. And this paper really underlines this the importance of of evaluations and how to do that correctly. Uh, since this process is also potentially dealing with uh, large data. So it needs RAG architecture, even with uh, larger contexts. Why? Because in order to get good estimate of, 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 the, of my instructions, I, don't, I, I cannot rely on one question and answer about this American-Mexican war, for example. If I'm estimating the good, good prompt for the historical questions, I need a hundred answers like that, a hundred questions like that answered. That means that my my context will will grow and my my can be replied everything. It's it's a lot. So so I have implementation uh, using uh, Kudrant uh, vector database, which kind of loads the whole uh, the whole knowledge about this domain. And again, here you will see that this vector database, like naive approaches are not really great. It's it's falling apart, but still the components are here. So uh, vectorization, uh, segmentation, uh, evaluation, all of that will be, will be discussed in here. And also since this is iterative process, we need um, generation in specific formats. Yeah, so that inputs and outputs to functions. We cannot really have uh, simple um, text uh, text outputs in here. Okay, so uh, so 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 so. Okay, so now let's go to not a nice notebook, but some code. Right. So first of all, LLMs as optimizers. Yeah. So what I'm uh, what I'm doing. There is this Llama 2 PDF, which is fairly large. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, I think it is, uh, oh, that's not open here. Like about 70 pages, quite, quite large Llama 2 training description. And we'll start asking questions about it. Yes. So. First of all, what we need to do is to generate this uh, document evaluation uh, data set. And so that's, that's what I mentioned. I started working on, uh, on, uh, on a tool which, uh, which generates questions and answers uh, based on your, on your data set. Yes, and uh, what it does, it goes through that PDF and you say, okay, I want certain amount of questions. It will split it into paragraphs or sentences. And then for each chunk, in this case, it's 25 sentences per, per, per chunk. It will generate three questions. Yes. And it will kind of go through all of that. Now, one of the challenges I saw here is that I'm generating a lot of uh, a lot of questions, a lot of requests, and of course we're running into into uh, OpenAI blocking requests because you are rate limits and whatnot. And Bosquet doesn't have at all uh, handling of those re retries, so that needs to be introduced. I will not run it now because it is uh, it is. Um, yeah, it really requires a lot of you know time and 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 uh, resources to do that. But what's the output? Is this uh, you have a basically tuples of a question and answer, question and answer, and it goes through all of that chunking, chunking the text, generating answers, chunking the text, generating questions and answers, and so on. And I'm not sure if this is the I kind of want to standardize it into this data set evaluation format and then use it uh, more broadly throughout the scat and further work. But this is the this is the goal of of um, of, of this um, uh, task here to evaluate to create uh, evaluation data set. Now again ideally 
Those questions and answers should be reviewed and guaranteed to be correct, yes? But, well, obviously this is not the case because both a question and an answer is generated by LLM. And why it is important? Because further down the line, I will be using questions and answers generated in this uh, optimization uh, loop. I will be comparing to this answer, to those answers, as if they are absolutely correct. Yes, that will be the assumption, which is not uh, not 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 correct, of course. But but let's let's make that assumption. Yes. So this is this is generated. This is the first thing. This is our like a golden set of of of, of uh, questions and answers to for the further evaluation of of the tasks. Um, yeah. So this is how it works. Then we will do loading of it. But that's that's the. That's the gist of it. And again, I would love someone to collaborate on 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 this kind of the evaluation uh, evaluation tooling. If anyone has any interest, or you know someone is interested in that, I would be happy to extract whatever few lines of code I have around evaluation into separate library. Um, yeah. And you see, this is commented out, so this is one one off. The one thing I will comment is that it is an enormous problem right now for everybody. Yeah. Um, in fact, I mean, like one of the running jokes is whenever you write a paper, you need to write your own evaluation framework to go along with it to make sure that you're at the top of some leaderboard so you can get it published. But um, yeah, it's it, there's, a, there's a lot of very complex stuff that go in around the uh, evaluation, the self-evaluation there on, on various, various levels of difficulty. So it is a very interesting uh, problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, being realistic here, something very simple, something very, very, you know, at least at least covering the basics, because even yeah, without having any sort of evaluation, yeah, it's it's just you know guess guesswork for any more complex stuff. Right. Um, so moving on, uh, you will notice that throughout Bosquet, I'm I don't use vector database. As a concept, I kind of try to move into this memory concept that okay, I'm memorizing something for the for the for the LLM to use and then retrieving the memories. Sure, I think under the hood it's just simply embeddings and vectors, but I kind of want to move away and then don't think in terms of embeddings and vectors because memory can be implemented in very different ways for, for the LLM. So that's why in, in every way we'll see this kind of okay mem using memory instead of uh, instead of the uh, like just vector database, and when I'm for example here, this will be using long term memory. So long term memory is and when you are constructing memory, it it accepts uh, accepts the uh, storage. So what kind of storage do you use and how it is encoded? So in this case, it's vector database and here it's it's embeddings, but essentially it can be anything. And then you are either remembering, uh, committing to memory, or then either you're free recalling, sequence recalling, or queue recalling through the query. Uh, so, but this is also the memory handling is still kind of still grappling. I'm, I'm still grappling with this concept I and mean, how to implement it correctly. So currently I have like this short-term memory, which is basically committing to atom and long-term memory, which is which is constructed through the okay encoder and storage. So I'm saying here, okay, this is embedding say API and uh Kudrand as as the storage. So what will happen is that I will store store my whole uh, whole document this llama to paper into the database again i will not be running it but we can actually see it here how embedding system is done so this is just independently um it is implemented good runs by the way if you saw it i was when I was also deciding okay, what to use as my primary primary uh, vector database, I chose Kudrant and was pleasantly surprised when a few weeks later, when OpenAI declared there all, all sorts of new stuff, people discovered that through the error messages <clears throat> that OpenAI is also using Kudrant for their uh, threads and all that powering new, new, new functionality they introduced. So for example, 
if we do this, we say, uh, let's create, and I have a simple wrapper around it. We want to test embeddings. We, we, we create this one, we create a collection. Then we are getting a service. I'm not going to do all the service uh, service function description of in in the um, Bosquet. It's integrant driven. We define components and it's uh, you can fetch them when you want. This is an example of texts. Yes, we turn them into embeddings, which will go into the uh, Open AI, uh, dirt cheap uh, storage. I'm planning to implement a few more. Cohere has good uh, embeddings. Uh, I uh, I tried, I spent like two weeks, good two weeks trying to, to have like a native, not, not native, but a local embedding generation through some um, Stanford NLP libraries, through um, deep learning for, J, for Java, but it was so obscure, so opaque. So I decided I just gave up and went API way. So if anyone knows any good approaches, to generate embeddings, full closure integration with JV, JVM languages, I'm happy to use it. And we add it, yes, we add it to, to, to our Kudran. So now this, yeah, here, test embeds, and you see that's our, our stuff, hello world, and so on and so on. Cars are driving on the road. Sorry and to, uh, mm -hmm. to interrupt um, on that. Of course, there are a ton of very, um, you know, interesting Python tools that are available to do that. I wouldn't want to, it would probably be painful for most folks to have to be required to set up um, Python in order to use that. But I could see an opportunity here, either through a, a related extension library or something like that to do a libpython CLJ plugin that would transparently use something like universal sentence encoder or yeah. any other hugging face model that would, uh, you know, allow you to do that locally too. And I'd be happy to um, work with you to, to do a strategy to, uh, to integrate that in there. Oh, cool. Cool. So let's, 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 let's follow up on that. That would be amazing. That would be great. Okay. Uh, so just a quick, just to finish this. So yeah, query embeddings. So, and this is like, I'm now will be querying for this. Yeah. Cars in town. So you see, I'm, I'm searching for cars in town and I only, I only have cars driving on the road and hello town. So let's query and uh, why it's not here. Oh yeah, it is coming. Yeah, so you see cars are driving on the road and so on. So as expected, yes. So this is the underlying mechanics of, of using uh, memory in, in Bosquet. So that's what I'm constructing. And this is what I'm, I will be committing the whole, I committed the whole document into a segmented document into this Kudrant memory here. Yes, Lama 2 QA aval. Yeah, so this is the I split it on certain lengths of, of, of sentences, and the whole thing is here. Yes, strictly nowadays, not that needed because of a huge context window in GPT-4, but for the demonstration and other reasons, that's still still life and still still good to have. So what we will be doing is then when I will be evaluating questions. I will query this, this database with the question. It will find the most relevant snippet and then we'll try to answer based on that snippet. Yes, so that's our golden set previously loaded, so we'll be evaluating, evaluating against this. And this is this mega prompt of, of the meta prompt of, um, of, the, uh, of the optimizations. Yes, so what is here, what is happening is that we are saying that LLM has to generate instruction. Yes, my prompt, how to solve it. Yes, here below are some previous instructions so if you remember where was those, uh, now let's think step by step. Yeah, so imagine the, like that. The instruction is, now let's think step by step. And then you throw at it a bunch of mathematical problems and it will start solving it. And then you score those, you compare those answers according to your golden set. You compose an average, uh, average score for this instruction 
you save it and then you repeat and we say okay now llm please please generate a new better instruction and then again you kind of even you you use that instruction it suggests instead of now let's do this thing step by step it says oh now let's take a deep breath and do something you know before before generating and you use that and see the scores and that's how you 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 kind of iterate till you find the best yes so this is your that will be the instruction score pairs as I'm iterating, so what I will be doing is that I will be iterating through this prompt multiple times, growing this part. Yes, it will grow and grow and grow till I till I'm satisfied or till I'm run out of credits or whatnot. Yes, this is my prompt template. So this is what I will be mutating. Yes, it is somewhere. Yes, here it is like context information is below. This is my my initial first. Oh, this is instruction. Wait, where is my instruction? Yeah, given the context information and no prior knowledge, answer the query. This is my initial, yes, initial seed, seed stuff. So it goes here and uh, initially it gets score something. And then we ask it, this is a sample, so just a few short, uh, few short examples of the, of the questions and answers. And then here we are asking it basically to generate a new one, new instruction. Yeah, so it will start based on all of that. It will start mutating this one, given the context information, no prior knowledge. So that's what will be happening. Um, again, if we look now at the code, non boscat custom code here, it's this blob of the of, of the con of the um, uh, prompt. No surprises here. This is essentially a prompt, and this is the those lines here fitting in a screen that's what's a custom code to implement this paper give or take and mostly it's also for like constructing maps for the uh, for the debugging so you see bosquet actually allows this uh, uh, allows to implement quite complex stuff with not that much of, of custom programming so let me run it so what we're taking here again i'm saying take six questions from golden set yes and do four iterations yeah, so the reason for low numbers is time because you will see it will take some time to execute and uh, and yeah you know uh, I will be running into um, whooping uh, ten dollars, maybe <laughs> to run it all. But but anyway, so so this is a, ideal in real scenario. You would run for for all hundred questions in my golden set. There is a, I think it's about 60, 60 valid um, things. Uh, yes. Yeah, so and this is uh, you see I'm shuffling. Take voices, a few short examples for the how questions and answers are. Do look like okay so i'll run it and it will probably be more explain it will explain itself better i just uh, okay let's do that let's clean up here let's clean up here and i rem i remembered something about evaluation uh, if i will not forget i will get back to it uh okay um so let's run it. Oh, no, that's all fine. It's just that it is not loaded properly. No, yeah, it's running. Yeah, so we can see the debug information. So a lot of calls are made. So I need to, to generate questions. I need to uh, ask it to self-evaluate. I need to then run this huge prompt. So it's... It's really, really resource intensive. Yes, the the whole thing, but um, uh, but 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 yeah, that's how it, it goes. Uh, we'll start get we'll start getting soon the intermediate uh, results for each step, basically. Yeah. So yeah, now because it also evaluates each uh, each each question it gets. So it's what six questions per iteration uh, plus uh, 
And you see oh, plus V this mega prompt also. And I'm mixing and matching GPT-3 for something, GPT-4 for the other. Honestly, I don't know, forgot for what I'm using GPT-4 and for what I'm using three. Yeah, so three is for this uh, oral prompt and evaluation is done with number with, with GPT-4. Yeah. Yeah, first one's here. So you see here, it's like one, two, six, six evaluations. So you said the, that's the evaluation question. It's running, yes. It gets, this is the answer for on this golden set, supposedly golden set. And this test answer is what we've got from the process of first retrieving from memory. Yes, so the chunk of the of, from, from the from vector database, which I noted is also immediately giving some problems, but okay. Um, so just on that chunk, it generates the answer. And then we ask GPT-4 to compare test answer with, with the golden answer, and it gives a score four. Uh, with this uh, step prompt. Yes, yeah, so quite, quite good. The others wants two, one, one, five, five. So, and uh, what will happen is that all of those questions received this instruction. Given the context information and no prior knowledge, answer the query. Yes, so this is, Wait, this is actually the initial one. Yes, this is initial one. And it will start mutating this one. Yes. So based on that. Yes, we've got another one. Yeah, so we can actually check out what is the what is the instruction. Yes. Ensure the generated responses track the balance between safety and helpfulness. Okay, very doubtful in terms of what it proposed, but it illustrates the point. So this is the another, uh, another example of all the instruction, this, this, uh, this process generated. And you can see that probably the scores are lower, 3.5. Once the process will finish, we'll get the averages, but I already see that this prompt is not that great, which is good that it is actually, well, who knows, who knows? Five, five, maybe it will be actually on average similar. Yes, and this is how Bosquet again, that's that's kind of the whole thing is returned. Yeah. So you can in your in your implementation, you can analyze the whole thing, uh, what's what's happening here. You see score four generated, ensure this. Ah, this is what's what's uh, going, this instruction score pairs. This is what's going into the system back, yes, into this part. Remember this one, this bit is growing with each iteration. Yeah, so LLM knows that I've, I've given it two, instruction, two, two versions of instructions. This version was bad, so I will generate something else which is, uh, which is better. We'll see it, uh, we'll see it, uh, yeah, here we have to have it. You think in a better shape? Oh, no. This one, iteration. Da, 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 da. Yeah, here. Give me a second. We'll render it in a text format. Yeah, you see? Instruction. This one on average is three. This one on average is 3.5. As I speak, I now see the bug in my implementation. I don't have the original, the first iteration, the first um, seed instruction I gave, but okay, this is this is fixable. But but it, it is supposed to be here. Anyway, so now when I'm at the end, when I'm saying, uh, when, when I'm saying where I'm saying, to, to generate a new one, your task, ah, you, your task is to generate instruction inst. Yeah, so here. So it will know that, okay, this, this, this version was not great. Yes. And maybe this one is better. So more follow along those lines. 
I see here dangling score 0 0.5. It's another bug in my implementation. I don't think it should be here, but yeah. I'm sorry, can we, um, can we back up briefly? I just want to make sure I understand what's happening. Uh -huh. It sounds to me like we have, we are taking an instruction and comparing it to another instruction and taking the better of the two instructions to proceed to the next step, or does the second instruction only occur in the event that the threshold of the previous instruction uh, is not met? And is this built into Bosquet, or is this, um, or is this related? Is this an implementation of the paper that we are currently focusing on? I'm sorry, I. I lost track of some of the details here, if you could help me. Um, this is all now implementation of a paper, this logic of, of constructing the different prompts, uh, different instructions, and then pasting them into this uh, uh, flow. This is not part of the standard Bosquet. It's it's paper implementation. That's the logic of the paper. And how it goes is that, okay, let me, uh, let's see where is that we have more of them here. Yeah, so think about this. Uh, let me look at the text. Yes, here. So we are running the same stuff here, the same stuff, yes, the same main meta prompt, or iteratively. In, in this case, we are running it four times. The only difference between those invocations is that this section grows, yes? And we are asking it to generate essentially only this. At the end of this executing this whole prompt, the output is this instruction. Not this particular, but like that, yes? Once I am in, in iteration one, this one was generated and it got a score free on average. How it got a score free on average is that I took this instruction here, ensure that generated uh, response is strike balance. And what happened is that I made six requests to LLM with this instruction, where I'm saying, where I'm saying like, like that, and, and I'm giving it this, ensure that it is accurate. And I'm asking this question, yes, to answer it. And it will answer with the with, with, with given a question and that instruction, it will provide an answer. And then I'm comparing it separately saying, okay, so how those two are, are, are similar and give it a score. So what's happening is that in this case, it's two, it is condensed already into one data structure, but to produce this, we, we, we made two requests to LLM. First is instruction, plus a a, pro, a question, yes? Yeah? So ensure that LLM generated out is accurate and I'm giving it a, a question, this one. What are the key contributions? It gets generated, so this is closed. Then another call to LLM is done where I'm saying, this is my evaluation answer, evaluation um, question, and this is the answer from my previous call. Then I'm comparing it and, and saying, okay, average is free. Yes. And I did it six times for six different questions here. Yes, six times. And what happens is that the whole, then I know that on average, this instruction, this particular instruction to answer the questions generated 3.7 or for example, this instruction generated 4.7 and so on. So I kind of, then once I know what is the average score for this instruction, I inject it into the, into this meta prompt one by one, yes. And I'm saying, and now this is iteration, let's say number three, we open here. Yes, it is number three because it's three, three, three prompts. And I'm saying now, okay, now you know your previous instructions, that's how you how you successful, how, how successful successful you was with this, yes? 
We've got score three for this instruction. For this instruction, this is a score. So evidently this direction like that is the best. So then it will ideally, then it will now generate a new instruction. It will pick up on this one as a best example and we'll probably use it as a negative example, let's say in, in, inside the LLM internal thinking. And then means that we will go into yet another stage and have it here generated uh, with more, uh, more, more instructions and, and examples. Like, okay, if I'm here, text. Yes, this one is step two, yes. So we only two instructions with scores. So the last, uh, the, the reason why the last one is has only three instructions is because I have a bug where I didn't include the last one, the initial one, but um, but that's how it works. So it kind of grows those instructions, yeah. So that it can can that's how it is discovering. So if we if we look into the let's close this one, yeah, let's open. Yeah, so this is three iterations, average score three. So with this instruction, when answering your questions, the LLM got score three. Then it kind of progressed and discovered this instruction as before, before answering the question. And now for the six test questions, the score is average score is four and so on. Then it kind of be went into worse examples. So for four iterations, and we would pick automatically this as our prompt to start answering questions about this LLM, LLM2 paper. Yes. Chidis, I'll uh, stop you for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 10 minutes, 10 minutes till the official time. Maybe some people may need to leave. So maybe you would like to have some conclusion. And then we can keep going as, as much as you can, if you wish. Yeah, does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so, yeah, so this is the, this is the implementation of this, uh, this um, optimization paper. If we go for, uh, yeah, here. So, and, it can be all sorts of different different uh, setups. You see here again, it, it has this task, initial task. It has those instructions. Let's figure it out. Yes, and it gave it all sorts of problems here in, in, in this color, uh, what's the purple color, yes. So that's the problems it is trying to solve. But it does not know, we don't know what is the best what is the best prompt? What is the best instruction to start answering those questions? So they start with, let's figure, figure this out. Yes, and then it will go through, through a set of answers and questions, estimate that, evaluate that, and give a score. And it knows now that this, this instruction to independently answer this type of problem, this is a math problem, gives me a score of 61. So that means that let's figure this out is kind of written here once I'm independently, totally independently out of all of that. I'm developing a chatbot for, for math problems. Yes, I don't really care. This language models of, of optimizers is my development stage. Once I discover the ideal prompt, I don't use it at all, but I need to discover what I'm pasting, what I'm, what I'm inserting into this uh, prompt here when I'm asking for this math problem. Yes, and want to optimize for this. So first iteration is let's figure this out. That's what's generated. Then we asked at the begin at the end, here write the text in the square brackets, a new, new, new instruction. So what happened that in another iteration of this go of this of this process, LLM generated that instruction. Yes. And what happens now that we take this, let's solve a problem. We insert here for the each question. And then again, go, 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 like whatever, whatever is the number of evaluations. And we get a score of 63. And if we stop here, we will choose let's solve uh, the problem as the highest scoring, uh, as the highest scoring instruction to solve it. Yeah. So 
it's quite um, quite intricate this uh, optimization uh, prompting and involves lots of lots of steps and lots of uh, issues. And now anyone has any questions? I'm going to, uh, to just to close it and uh, and move on to other things. Other questions if you have. <laughs> I've got a lot, but I'll I'll save it because it's going to run over time. So, um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. I think you hoped to say something about evaluation earlier. I don't know if you got uh, to say yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So. Just an example of uh, of oh yes, evaluations is here. How how I am asking to evaluate? Yes, it's actually from Lamo Index. We are using this. Uh, not going into this, but let me show you what happens. Evaluate uh, answer. No, not evaluation. I want Q and A generator. Q and A generator. Yes, if I run it, if I run it, I'm saying here that in my chunk, I'm kind of batching four questions in one request, yes? And I will show you how how difficult it is to achieve the quality with... Uh, so what, what we, we all know batching technique for, for LLM, yes? Instead of running one question, one answer at a time against LLM, I'm batching four questions in this in this case and getting four, four answers. That means that ordering has to be exactly the same in response and count exactly the same in response. And I will show you that this is not the case, which will be no surprise that LLMs will often, when you ask them, when you ask them three questions in a batch, they will answer with uh, five questions so so on it will and it will mismatch and what i'm having is it still running yeah running so what i have and it's another direction where i would love for community help is this uh, response verification so imagine that we have something like this but more generic is that as a mali schema i'm saying that what shape my answers should come from from the llm i say that okay it has to be sequence with strings that may minimum two check characters long that's the maximum one uh, and also, I have to ensure, I didn't find out quickly how to do it in Mali, that two vectors have to be exactly... <laughs> cool. That's my interesting bug. I'm, I'm uh, comparing responses and responses. It has to be questions. Yeah. Uh, so that they have to be exactly the same. Yes, that if I ask three questions, it has to come back with three questions. And in this case, the Mali verification, yeah, here, you see, query count is four, response is five. So I asked four questions, and then Mali, and then uh, LLM responded with five responses, yes? So that's the mismatch which needs to be resolved and then through prompting and whatnot. But this is, again, quite a big, big standalone uh, project and library how to how to make sure that the shape of uh, llm answers is as i want it to be and i have a hunch that if we use spec or mali spec doesn't matter it would be such an interesting and great uh, great project to have to be able to spec the llm answers and and force as much as possible yeah that's the thing i want to Cool, but yeah, apologies for dumping so much and uh, so such a big everything. And then that uh, is great. That is great. I think Ash was going to ask something or say something. 
Well, I'm, I'm, I think I think uh, I need to increase my short term memory because I can't remember what it was now, Daniel. But thanks. <laughs> Yeah. Um, maybe, I, I, maybe. Do wanna, oh, yeah. I just wanted to briefly remark, I have been working with a lot of open source code in the LLM universe these days, and it is very refreshing to see some closure code uh, by comparison to the Python code. This is very beautiful. A lot of the um, a lot of the Python code is is very rushed and uh, very little more than, than a prompt wrapper around GPC-4 at this point. And it's, uh, it is refreshing to see some, um, some, some well thought out and well organized code. So thank you for putting this together for us. Yeah, thanks. Yes, it could be a good time if anybody needs to leave because it is like 90 minutes now. So if anybody needs to leave, maybe anybody wishes to say some concluding thoughts, and then we could continue if if you have time, Sigis. Um, yeah, yeah, I yeah, thought... yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, yeah. I was reading the chat messages, so we got a bit distracted, but yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so any thoughts, any comments about anybody? Hi, mm -hmm. uh, I'm Kanishk. So, um, it was a fantastic uh, presentation and 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 the contribution in this domain. Um, although I've been into um, LLMs and then working uh, while integrating them, uh, I was uh, I was not seeing some. Uh, maybe I was not following that much. But closure uh, that closure community has done for uh, Skycloud. So Daniel and to all of you guys, uh, kudos. Um, also, uh, um, I have posted um, a request for your email ID so that, yeah, uh, thank you so much. So there is, uh, you would know Nilenso. So that is one of the um, major companies that is using Clojure for their gaming. So um, uh, this person uh, is one of the pioneer of uh, in, in India itself. So, um, he, he was looking out for some projects, so uh, he just pinged me up and then I had a uh, while you said it, so I just wanted to um, ask you for that. Uh, so thank you so much. I will I will uh, forward this email to you, uh, to, uh, to him. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much again. Thank you for being us, with us, Kanish. So wonderful to meet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this hallucination bug is also great. I will try to join. Yeah, and as you see, this is like a lot of a lot of. Uh, I will, for example, I was all gearing up with Bosquet, uh to to do agents. Uh, but when you understand that, okay, without precision, without this, without that, it's it's not worth it. Even you know it's toy implementation, um, and yeah, and you need everything. It's such a new space. So it's like the whole new tooling. Yes, as I said, evaluations, so prompt construction, everything. So it's like, and uh, Bosquet is like the. In some ways, it's it's just a rag bag of everything. So, uh, so I'm happy to kind of extract bits and pieces into separate libs, and then just to, you know have it more composable as we go. So, so I don't want it to be like this, you know, going to this lang chain uh, begemot so uh, um, uh, implementation with everything in one place. So. So it's uh, yeah, and I'm happy to to collaborate and then see maybe we can extract bits and pieces and, and you know build separate slips. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah, I guess maybe in a moment we will stop the recording and then keep going unrecorded, unless uh, there are parts that you feel should be recorded, uh, uh, whatever you think. Um, and uh, James, you did write a few things in the chat. Sorry for not seeing it earlier. Would you like to say it with your voice as well? Oh, let's see. 
the only ones that I can remember and see in my history were um, with a related uh, LLM community that's more on like the Python side right now. We are, but still, you know, do a lot of good academic work. We're having a discussion tomorrow about um, quant quant quantifying the hallucinations, you know, hallucinations in um, LLMs. Very fascinating work with a lot of really smart people. I am working on getting some public invites uh, available for that in case anyone is interested, please follow up in the Discord with Daniel or I put my um, email in the chat um, to follow up. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, so uh, what do you think, Shigis? What should we do now? Should we just chat unrecorded or should we keep going with a recording for a bit? Yeah, so no, do, if anyone has I don't know, any comments, suggestions, so what, what would be what's interesting for you in LLM and uh, maybe maybe it's a good candidate to add to Buscat? Uh... Well, I will just make a remark. Uh, seeing this um, reminds me of something I learned a while ago, and I'm sure coming from an NLP standpoint, the idea of a generative grammar is is nothing new here to you, but uh, it's been a while since I've, I've revisited them, but mm. the, the tooling available in, in the Python community does not, it is much more about composition of objects and uh, the very popular um, uh, idea right now is what they call multi-agent which really just means multi text buffer really um, it's not actually multi-agent but uh to, and using function calling to pass between the agents however uh what this kind of made me uh realize with with the the compositionality of the prompts and the text in conjunction with the um the templating, it, it just made me realize that, uh, that doing some kind of work related to a generative grammar in conjunction with the, uh, the LLM responses, because that's effectively what you're doing right now is you almost have like a stochastic uh, generative approach to these prompts that are coming back. Um, and it's a uh, it's it's kind of fascinating to think about coordinating the uh, activity of an LLM uh, deterministically by using a generative grammar that would be facilitated pretty greatly by uh, the the tooling in Bosquet here. So, um, uh, mm -hmm. very very interesting uh, work. Got gave me a lot to think about. Yeah. Yeah, so that's also one of the aspects why I'm interested in adding adding uh, Llama CPP uh, is that you can play around with more like deterministic up outputs and uh, uh, influence token uh, probabilities, all, all of that of all of that stuff. So, uh, but of course, it would not work with uh, service based. So yeah, at some point. So mm -hmm. I think what might be the easiest way to do this, as as we discussed, is a um, is a, is it is not incredibly difficult to um, use the OpenAI Python library to uh, you you can pretty easily hook into that to serve an arbitrary model via the OpenAI API requests. And if we were to put together a ring server that incorporates the open AI stuff, uh, it would be very easy to easy, relatively speaking, to plug in models into that, that tools like yours would be able to simply consume an, the open AI API as they normally do. Uh, and you don't really have to be aware of the implementation details of, of the server, yep. but you can point to the server that you want and keep your spec the same. So for me, I, I take that as a takeaway of, I think that that would be a pretty good uh, tool to add in would be a uh, something like a ring server that can host uh, open source models, hugging face models. That would also cover our embedding 
use case because we could get embeddings via API um, easily as well. And I think that that would relieve of the burden of um, needing to, you know, implement Python directly into your existing project. So I think that that might be a, um, a, an interesting area to target right there. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah, that's a good idea. I wish to ask another thing. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you you demonstrated a few tools working together, in particular portal, this data navigation UI, and that that was so inspiring. Just to see how you work with these tools, mm -hmm. and and it is an interesting situation because you're running something, and it might be still running, and you can already explore. And I'm wondering if you have any insights about this workflow, about what you would like it to be, and about what future tools would make it more fluent. Yeah. So this is this is yeah this is also very good uh, good tool because uh, usually you deal with those complex big data structures. Yes, network graph in a way. Well, not in a way. Uh, and portal is really good at at, at all those different different views yes you can turn it into text you can print print you can inspect depending on the on the shape of your data which is really cool uh, i i wish i would be able to say the same about clerk mm, i want not it's it's amazing it's it's really good to to generate docs and to as, and i'm using it but still i'm finding it's struggling and writing more code around this uh, uh, so that in clerk it will render nicely but that's probably expected because they want it to be nice like and product by the way this this presentation i did for prompt optimizations i will turn into a nice clerk uh, documentation uh, book uh, once i finish and i run out all the problems so it will also be nicely presented but i was kind of I, I gravitate towards cl using clerk as the as the end uh, you know blog post instead of using it as my work environment. I'm not sure if it is even good uh, and intended use, but I was always wanting for clerk to be something like portal, yes, where I can explore and easily see the stuff. Um, but it's not that uh, unless I don't know how to use it. So that's why I can really for development, it's more in portal. Uh, which is absolutely great for 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 this and this that we can while the process is running you still can, you can work and examine it especially since LLM requests are, are slow yes so you can you can instead of browsing some random peep you can <laughs> you can explore your data actually. Yeah. Um, I I would like to briefly contribute. There is a new tool out in case no one has ever seen it yet called Flowstorm that yeah. is an, what they call an omniscient debugger. If you've ever done any common list work, it lets you go forward and backwards. It's actually more like an audit than um, a debugger, but it is really, really useful if you need to rewind in your work and see, you know, because I don't know about you, I can't tell you how many times I skip past the point where I'm in and I have to restart my whole debugger and everything like that. Um, and it is not too painful to set up, you know, we're used to that now with closure tooling and new tools and everything like that. Um, and uh, I think it uh, would be a pretty good uh, value add for some of your exploratory analysis. It even works with closure script, which is amazing. It lets you do step through debugging and Emacs with closure script, which I've never seen before. So um, it's a very powerful tool. And I think you, you might find some use out of it there. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. It looks really great. Yeah, it's on my list to, to check it out. Yeah. But it was also Vlad, or, or what's, what was the name of, similar to Portal, uh, also a tool like that. I tested it a bit and forgot actually about it. It looked also good. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was revealed by Vlad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah, can't tell anything. I just remember I kind of played around a bit and then Simply forgot, not not because it's bad or something. Just I don't know, just drifted away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Does anybody have anything to say before we stop recording? I just want to say it's a really interesting session. Thank you. Yeah. Happy. Happy. With yeah. This. And 
I'd like so to, inspiring. I'd like to see forward to a talk seven, Daniel, right? Yeah. Oh, Dan, you were saying something, sorry. Well, I just wanted to to say the same thing. It's it's fascinating to see the work and it's a little bit above my knowledge, but uh, I do intend to go deeper and especially now that I discovered that it's so much easier compared to the Python tooling and and I I don't like how things compose in the Python tooling and this is so much clearer and thank you for doing this tool because it's tremendous help for me and for others, I guess. Yeah, so try using it uh, for issues in GitHub because I noticed that it's mainly me using it and then people are running into very trivial issues, so which I don't, which I simply overlook, like this Eden, uh, system Eden not loading, which is obviously overlook on my end. So lots of thing can, things can be ironed out by a few, few you know, pairs of eyes uh, look, using it in slightly different ways that I, I myself used it. One of the good things is that not only that it's done in Clojure, but it's using the same kind of the same tools that I use normally. So I use Portal, great tool. I use Clerk, <laughs> great tool. So, so all these are coming together for me to easier to, to understand. And if you have a problem, it's easier to understand it compared to some other uh, tools that you're not familiar with. Yeah, so that's also was my kind of the, one of the secondary goals when building uh, is to, to, to use as much as possible of existing uh, closure ecosystem to integrate that to kind of be as a show of support as well, but it's also amazing tools we have. I, I'd like to also mention the, the I don't, I've never used Selma, but Pathom, that was a, a, a great idea to use because it, it knows how to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And something also I want to, I uh, open, um, um, close open AI library, amazing library. We just released it and I hope they added this function calling, a new function calling because it was not supported. We, we released it today, a new version. And what I want to do a short demo and, and clerk notebook is parallel function calling. I request OpenAI to call me, me with five functions. I feed it into Python in a synchronous mode and it will call it in parallel. And I will compare it with Langchain implementation, which will be like, you know, <laughs> don't be much more elegant. So I, I feel the need to say on record at this point, a lot of people think the only option for function calling is open AI. It is not the only option for function calling. I would strongly encourage everyone to check out the model called Nexus Raven 13B. I don't know how this thing completely got left out of the news cycle, but it is an incredible open source function calling tool um, with an incredible amount of flexibility built into it. Uh, I think that it is not currently built into the typical workflow the developers who are using open ai are used to but it would not be very difficult to incorporate um and i would really i think we everyone shares the same sentiment that it would be nice to not have a monoculture built around open ai regardless of how amazing the tool is and, and don't get me wrong they have an amazing model and, and amazing services but you know a monoculture doesn't do anything good for anybody so yeah. um, there are alternatives there and i would encourage you to check that out nexus raven 13b in particular Mm -hmm. Already the book market. Maybe one of you can uh, mention what function calling is in the, in this context of NLMs. Okay, so it, my my the way that I look at function calling, I'll just explain it briefly. Is you want back a parsable output from an LLM that could be interpreted in a way uh, that you could then execute with actual code, right? So you want to get the LLM to fill in the, the arguments and the name of the function and return that in a way, preferably already parsed into a data structure uh, that you can then execute, right? And so you're technically, you are forcing the LLM to hallucinate into calling a function. And, but then you take the, the uh, parsable result of that, run the code yourself. And usually this is 
part of a, a, an internal workflow to uh, incorporate an LLM as a, as a fuzzy coupler component on, on some kind of system like that. But, but that's the main idea is you want back the name of the function and the uh, parameters of the function that have been populated by the LLM with the data required. Typically you pass in uh, a doc string, uh, a name, uh, or sorry, a, a list of hash map of name doc string and then parameter descriptions as the input along with a prompt. And then what you're expecting to get back is that parsed data that you can then execute within your own workflow. So that's the concept of function calling with LLMs. Yeah. Beautiful, thank you. In Maybe in the context of, of Clojure, this would be like composing your program with the prompt. Now the prompt will give you an answer which you can basically continue in your in your execution of your program yeah there are there are various ways to disguise it um, or to abstract away the llm portion of it in fact there's a library i think it's called pydantic in yeah. um, python which uses uh higher level functions effectively that they call decorators to uh wrap functions we would probably use a macro to accomplish the same effect um, but it replaces the internals of the function with an LLM call uh, to, to accomplish the same effect. So there are there is definitely some interesting work in that area to intermix uh, classical flow control code with, um, with LLM function calling. Mixed results right now, and of course, almost every single library and paper in the world relies on OpenAI to do it, but um, a lot of interesting... Uh, applications there to mix classical and, and, and very modern transformer-based techniques. Uh, Chikis, would you like to say something before we say goodbye to the recording? Oh, yeah. So thanks for joining. It's, it's, it's great. It's great to present. It's great to see, to hear that you find it interesting, potentially useful. It's, it's, a, it's, it's really a pleasure to, 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 to see other people, you know, finding your work uh, interesting. So, so the pleasure is mine that you, you, you are joining and, and, and giving me a chance to, to, to present it. Um, yeah, so Daniel, time and again, thank, thanks to you for, for always organizing organizing it and always i don't know bringing in the energy bringing in the the um, yeah the you know the beautiful attitudes be, you know optimism and then uh, yeah so it's great great that you're doing this um yeah so hope we can continue building this up yeah i agree so if you're not all on yes, Daniel, um, right. I've seen your videos earlier, so you're a good, you're a very good host. It's for Daniel. Oh. Yeah. Oh, thank you, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. So maybe we can now say goodbye to the recorded part and to our listeners. We can say see you on the next times, and I'll stop recording now. <laughs>